If you've been around the competitive Splatoon community for even a little while, you've likely heard some bleak and negative thoughts from players about many of the sub-weapons in this game. If not though, then you haven't missed out on much. Essentially, players are crazy for bombs. If a sub-weapon doesn't go boom and put high paint on the floor and do reliable damage, most competitive players probably don't think highly of it. And to an extent, that is fair. From comboing damage with your main weapon for easier splats, to dislodging enemies from behind cover, to using paint output to charge your special meter quickly and safely, and much more, there are plenty of benefits to having a bomb as part of your weapon's kit. This leads to players automatically thinking poorly of any sub-weapons that are not bombs though, simply because they often can't provide these same use cases, or at least not as directly. If you've seen any of my guides before though, you know by now that I don't often agree with the masses, and this is no exception. We're playing a 4 player team game where a team's composition can include both bombs and other sub-weapons at the same time, so we don't have to choose between just one or the other. So let's explore what other sub-weapons can truly do for us, shall we? Hello, I'm Pika, a high level Splatoon coach and competitive player, and welcome back. This will be the first video in what I'm hoping will become a series covering every sub-weapon that isn't a bomb in Splatoon 3, or what I often refer to as utility sub-weapons. Today, we're kicking off this series with one of my favorite utility subs in the game, Toxic Mist. Beginning in Splatoon 1 as a completely different sub-weapon called Disruptor, it's safe to say the concept of Toxic Mist has gone through considerable changes over the years, so let's begin by covering the stats and mechanics of Toxic Mist to make sure we're all on the same page. By default, Toxic Mist takes 60% of your ink tank to throw out, making it slightly cheaper than standard bombs. When the flask hits the ground, it spawns a circular cloud of mist that lingers for 5 seconds. Any enemies that enter into that mist are slowed down, and their ink tank will start passively draining, speeding up the longer they remain inside, but immediately ending once they escape the mist. When an enemy enters mist and gets the debuff applied to them, a sound effect will play and a visual effect will be seen over the player, even if they're in squid form, meaning you'll be aware as soon as anyone makes contact with your mist. This is what the audio sounds like. Toxic Mist will also work regardless of terrain, so as long as the opponent enters into the visual of the cloud, they will receive the debuff, even through walls. The last and quite niche mechanic is that any Dooley users that try to dodge roll while debuffed by Toxic Mist will have their rolls consume 3.5 times more ink than they normally would require, meaning Toxic Mist hits Dooley players especially hard. For interactions with gear abilities, Sub Power Up will allow you to throw the Toxic Mist flasks farther, and Sub Resistance Up decreases the movement speed reduction that you receive from opposing Toxic Mists. It takes a minimum of 1 main and 4 subs of Ink Saver Sub, or 22 ability points, to bring the ink cost of Toxic Mist below 50% to be able to throw two of them at once. Last Ditch Effort at full effect gives 24 ability points worth of Ink Saver Sub, meaning it alone can be enough to grant this effect as well if that's something you want to have access to. That's all the raw mechanics of Toxic Mist covered, so what does this tell us about how Toxic Mist should be used? In my opinion, what sets Toxic Mist apart from other sub-weapons is how long the effect lingers on the stage and the fact that it applies a debuff to opponents, both of which are essentially unique characteristics, with the closest comparisons likely being point sensors and angle shooters with their marking effect. The Mist Cloud lasting for 5 seconds is pretty extreme in a game that moves as quickly as Splatoon 3 does, especially when you consider that most specials rarely last much longer than that, and those cost an entire special gauge, while Toxic Mist is a mere 60% of an ink tank. Pair that long duration with the slowing effects of the Mist debuff, it becomes obvious pretty quickly that this sub is primarily designed as a defensive option meant to slow down and restrict the other team. If a Toxic Mist is thrown down ahead of the other team as they try to push forward, they'll be left with a tough decision. They can choose to push forward anyway through the mist, though the lack of ink recovery, slowed movement, and the visual indicator making them easily visible will put them at a massive disadvantage against anyone who chooses to fight them during that time. Alternatively, they may try to find another angle to attack or wait until your toxic mist fades before they push, which either way still grants your team more time to react and prepare for your full-on defense. When using Toxic Mist defensively like this, it's important to keep in mind that your Mist must be in position BEFORE any enemies try to push forward, since the whole point of using Mist this way is to prevent them from reaching whatever destination they have in mind. It's also important that you use Mist in locations where the width of the cloud is enough to block an entire path so enemies can't just swim around it easily. This means that choke points, or narrow sections of the map linking together two larger sections, are perfect places to keep Toxic Mist active. For any viewers familiar with tactical shooter games like Counter-Strike or Valorant, you can think of Toxic Mist much like Smokes in those games. Smokes are also best used in those games in choke points or narrow spaces where they can entirely block enemy vision and discourage them from pushing. Except instead of blocking line of sight, 
Mist discourages pushes with its slowing effects and location revealing sounds and visuals. Since the majority of weapons that come with Toxic Mist in the game currently have long range and already lean towards defensive playstyles, such as Custom Jet, Rapid Pro, and the Tri Stringer, this persistent ability to slow down other teams and keep them away from you naturally pairs well with these. Also, game modes where you can easily predict when and where your opponents need to push forward favor defensive toxic mist the most, such as placing the mist in front of an opponent carrying the Rainmaker or a Power Clam to keep them from scoring points, or trapping Tower Riders in Tower Control on a checkpoint where they're forced to stay stationary. Now I can say all I want, but don't just take it from me, take it from some of the best players in the world. This is the replay code looking over the match between Starburst and Alliance Rogue on Inkbot Art Academy Clams and the somewhat recent Ink TV Insurgents League. If you somehow did not see this set when it happened live, I'll leave the link to the Ink TV video below where you can watch the whole thing down in the description, as well as the link to Ice's Twitter because bro is just simply a god at the game. Here, Ice is on the custom Jet Squelcher, of course a Toxic Mist weapon, so this is some top level Toxic Mist gameplay we're going to see. And as they back away here, I can open the map, and you can see in the bottom right that Ice is running both Last Ditch Effort and Domain of Sub Power Up, so this is a build centered around Toxic Mists. So as soon as it looks like Alliance Rogue is going to start their push, Ice backs up to a safe position where they can use the max range of their main weapon and Sub Power Up Toxic Mist to just keep Alliance Rogue out. You can see that Alliance Rogue is throwing in these tri strikes, these bombs, and still, because of the constant miss, they just don't feel confident trying to actually push, even with all these specials committed. And as soon as it finally looks like Alliance Rogue gives up on left and wants to try pushing right instead, Ice just looks over there and starts setting up mists on the right ramp instead and throws mists in this choke point. Remember as I was saying earlier, these choke points, these narrow spaces, are generally the best for toxic mists because it's difficult to get around it. You know the other team needs to come up these ramps to score points somehow, and Ice knows this too. So as long as mist is always there, there's no way for Alliance Rogue members to get around it. They have to push through the mists to reach the basket, and that's just such a disadvantage that they don't want to take. So by Ice just existing and keeping up these mists and being in a safe position, it stalls this push for so long. This is now the second set of triple ink strikes coming out, it's been nearly 30 seconds, and still Alliance Rogue has not been able to reach the basket and get a single clam in. Eventually they will reach the basket, but still. Look how long Ice is able to single-handedly ward off this push by just spamming mists in these choke points from these safe positions. They finally get one clam in and commit their third set of triple ink strikes to the push, but at this point they barely follow up, so the push is already over. Ice does go down sadly, but teammates clean it up. That was the defense. This safe, persistent, and disciplined usage of Toxic Mist was enough to carry this defense for so long, even at such a high level of play. Again, both of these teams are some of the best in the West, so if Toxic Mist can put on a good showing here of all places, that has to count for something. That's an overall breakdown on how to use Toxic Mist in its likely dev-intended defensive ways, which as discussed has plenty of unique strengths in its own right. However, this is a Pika guide, so what would it really be without some examples of some more creative thinking too? Namely, I'm talking about using Toxic Mist more aggressively, especially on my favorite mist weapon, the tri Slosher, and also any other aggressive weapons that may get mist in the future. So far, we've been focusing on how to use mist to keep enemies away from you, or in other words, how to keep them from approaching. But what if we turn that around and ask the other question instead? What if we were able to keep opponents from running away from us? Well, since mist slows people down no matter where they're going, we can do just that if given the chance. Tri Slosher as a main weapon clearly favors up-close duels, so if you want to engage a fight on someone, you can just spike a toxic mist either right on top of them or behind them to ensure they have no way to escape your range as the fight begins. This makes your shots even easier to hit, since you restrict their movement options and you ensure that they can't strafe backwards outside of your range, forcing them to commit to a disadvantaged fight. Placing Mist behind them can also slow down any of their teammates from farther away from being able to rush over and help them as you clean up the fight, ensuring that they're the only target you need to be concerned about. Again, this is best used with tri Slosher currently, but any Mist weapon can do this when looking to get aggressive. Even when not actively looking to engage a fight right away, Mists can still help initiate aggressive pushes in other ways. As we covered at the start, Toxic Mist has a loud audio cue that plays when it applies its debuff to an enemy. This can help you locate any opponents who may be sharking in their ink nearby, essentially like a budget point sensor. If you're unsure if an area is safe to move into, throw in a mist first. If you hear the audio play, then you know someone is there and you can adjust your approach around that. Also, we've talked a lot about how mist can prevent someone from moving from point A to B, but sometimes it can be fine to simply prevent an enemy from keeping any position in particular too. For example, if the other team keeps using one position on their defenses to deny your team's pushes, you can start throwing toxic mists at that spot to kindly ask them to go somewhere else. It won't necessarily force them to move right away, but if they don't respect it, they'll be out of ink before long and won't be able to threaten anything after that. 
This is especially useful against slow, long-range weapons like chargers and spotlings, that love to anchor down in particular positions. Going a bit back into defensive uses for Toxic Mist, the final trick I have has to do with Triple Ink Strike and Booyah Bomb. See, normally these specials will completely destroy enemy sub-weapons within their radius. However, this property does not apply to Toxic Mist, along with a few other utility sub-weapons. So if you see the other team preparing to launch a Booyah or Ink Strike to kickstart their push, toss a Toxic Mist directly into it to slow anyone down who may be using those specials as cover. Both of those specials completely paint the floor within them and also make it essentially impossible to see anyone who's swimming through them due to the visual effects, but a Toxic Mist cares about neither of these things. Even if an enemy is completely in their own ink, the mist will still slow them down. And even if you can't see them at all, that audio cue will still play when it hits them. So you'll know whether or not they are using the cover of their special to push, and you'll have extra time to move away to safety if they are. Still with me? I know that was a lot, but if anything, that should go to show just how creative you can get with Toxic Mist. And trust me, it's certainly not the only utility sub with this much nuance and depth to it either. So I'm excited to continue on with this series. I'm thinking I'll cover Angle Shooter next, but feel free to comment what subs you want to see. So many creative and unique playstyles come from weapons that have utility sub-weapons, so they're often my favorites to play, and it's also why hearing them get slandered by other players so frequently honestly disappoints me. Again, this is a team game that's very dependent on context and skill expression, so arguing in black and white over what sub-weapons better and all that never really makes sense to me. I'm just here to teach you what all the tools available to you in this game can do, and let you draw your own ideas and conclusions from that. If by chance you want a more detailed breakdown on how to play Toxic Mist specifically with Tri-Stringer, I made a guide to Stringers a while back that I'll link in the card. Also, if you're interested in Splatoon coaching, I have a link to my Medify page down below. It's the start of summer break from college at the time of me writing this, so I should have plenty of available time slots for the next few months. That's all from me, so thanks for watching, and have a good one.